this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a most marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. And today we are talking about a very, very serious subject. And that is how to prevent black women from dying of childbirth and after. It is really astounding to me in recent years that so many black women seem to be suffering from giving birth, dying in childbirth and after. At one point, I think people just sort of ignored it because black women have been giving birth for forever and haven't been having all of this trouble giving birth. My mother had 11 children. 10 of us were born at home with a midwife. And their last baby came at the age of 40. And so they decided it's time to go to a hospital. But all of us were born at home with a midwife. But times have changed. And life is a lot more complicated than it was back in the 50s and the 60s when my mother was having children. So different times call for different measures. The maternal mortality rates for black women versus white women are startling. Black women are two and a half times more likely to die in childbirth than white women. And in some cases, it's up to five times more likely. Let me rush to say that there is a maternal mortality rate among all women. There are women from all cultures and socioeconomic levels that die in childbirth. But the concern right now is for black women because black women's rates are higher. Now, the statistics say that women who live in rural areas and don't have access to medical care, quality medical care, are more at risk than women who live in urban areas. But black women across social economics, even if they have a lot of money, it seems that black women in this modern age are having a hard time bearing children. Of course, that's not everybody, but the ones who are having problems are really having problems. So I've been looking into it, and there are some reasons, some concerns, that black women need to be aware of and all of our family members, all of us who have young women of childbearing age who are pregnant, we need to be on the lookout for problems and to be as supportive as we can be of them and be aware of the warning signs and not just let them ignore things that might be important because they're young. And I said women of childbearing age because this can begin even before they become pregnant. There are health conditions that disproportionately affect black women and black mothers that may contribute to the maternal mortality risk. And these include the old friends that we know about or the old enemies, chronic heart disease, hypertension, obesity, and diabetes. These are things that need to be brought under control before a woman gets pregnant. And even when you become pregnant, you can have a spike in your blood sugar level and become what they call gestational diabetic. And you might go back to being normal after the pregnancy, after you deliver the baby, but you can definitely develop diabetes along with a pregnancy. But the problem here is that if you're not seeing a doctor regularly and you're not monitoring your blood sugar level, this could get out of hand. And then when it's time to deliver the baby, it could create a greater complication. So that is one of the reasons why women who are pregnant need to have regular checkups so the doctor can monitor all of these things. So these things need to be paid attention to and they need to be dealt with on a very serious level because these are some of the things 
that are causing black women not to survive childbirth. Knowledge is power. So when we know better, we can do better. So heart disease, hypertension, obesity, and diabetes are some of the causes of black women having complications during pregnancy that might lead to, to them not surviving. Now here are four suggestions that doctors give on how to reduce black maternal mortality rates. Number one, family and friends need to support and advocate for women who are pregnant or recently postpartum, meaning who recently gave birth. Listen to their concerns and encourage them to seek medical help. Number two, pregnant and postpartum women need to be aware of potential risks during pregnancy and after delivery. For example, it's important that they watch for urgent maternal warning signs and seek medical help without delay when signs appear. And so over and over and over again, it says seek medical help. Number three, Healthcare professionals need to listen to patients' concerns and educate patients regarding warning signs and their individual risk. Now, Serena Williams, who had problems with her first baby, talked about doctors not listening when she was telling them things that she was concerned about. So that's very important to have a doctor who's going to listen to you and take your concerns seriously. And number four, health researchers need to investigate maternal health topics to learn more about risk factors and potential interventions to reduce maternal mortality. This research is especially important given that women, particularly pregnant women, are often excluded from clinical research studies. And that speaks to gender bias in the medical field because anything that goes wrong with men, they're gonna research that to the end till they find a cure for it or a cause of it. But when it comes to women, women get the short end of the stick and then black women are gonna get even a shorter end of the stick. So more research is needed but also they need to pay attention to women and to women's bodies and listen to what women say. People know what's wrong with them. A doctor doesn't have to tell you, you have a headache. You know that before they do. So what is the United States healthcare system doing to decrease black maternal mortality rates? Well, at least 30 states have expanded Medicaid postpartum care coverage to address maternal mortality and ensure access to care after the traditional six week postpartum visit. So apparently this is not just giving birth in, in the labor room, but also extending at least a year after a woman has given birth. These health risks can occur anytime from the time you get pregnant until up to a year after you've given birth. Also, healthcare organizations are making positive changes. For example, black communities have a long tradition of midwives. Yes, we do. Incorporating doulas and midwives during care can help mothers navigate the healthcare system, lessen the discrimination in the healthcare system, and connect families to social services. Additionally, many hospitals, healthcare organizations, and medical schools are implementing implicit bias training programs to promote culturally sensitive care. See, discrimination in the healthcare system is also a part of this. The discrimination coming in the form of not taking the time to listen and inform women of the warning signs that they need to be aware of, not treating things in a timely fashion when something arises. And let's face it, 
not treating pregnant black women with respect. In our community, when somebody is pregnant, it could be a big deal to us. But a pregnant black woman to the larger society might represent a threat. Remember, there is a 0% birth rate in the majority society. So we have to be mindful of all of these things. Things haven't changed that much. So here is a list of things that women who are pregnant or just delivered up to a year after delivering a baby, these are some things that you need to be aware of. Headache that won't go away or gets worse over time. Dizziness or fainting. Changes in vision, fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, extreme swelling of your hands or face, thoughts about harming yourself or your baby, trouble breathing, chest pain or fast beating heart, severe nausea and throwing up, severe stomach pain that won't go away, baby's movement stopping or slowing during pregnancy, vaginal bleeding or fluid leaking during pregnancy, vaginal bleeding or discharge after pregnancy, severe swelling, redness or pain of your leg or arm, and overwhelming tiredness. These are things that you need to report to your doctor as soon as these warning signs appear. Anything out of the ordinary, anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, where you know something is wrong, go to the doctor and insist that they pay attention to you. I'm going to leave some links in the comment section for you to go and read more about this if you would like to. I cannot stress how important this is, how important it is for pregnant women to have support from their families, their husbands, or significant others, everybody. Because children really are our future. If we're not having children, then we don't have anything to talk about. So this is extremely important. And, and if you know someone that's pregnant, please share this uh, video with them. It may be something that might be helpful to somebody. So please share the video. These numbers are staggering, but this can be reversed. This is not a big mystery. We know what the issues are in our community and we need to correct them because this is the most important thing that we do, bringing children to this earth and raising them to be productive citizens of this society. So this is something that's really important. Okay, thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video, and as always, have a great day.